Hi, this is Pastor Rebecca from Duluth Gospel Tabernacle, and I'm so glad you joined us. You've come for rainbows on a Wednesday night, haven't you? I am so glad you're here. I am the children's pastor at Duluth Gospel Tabernacle, and we do ministry for kids from birth until sixth grade, and then our DGT Momentum Youth Group does it from 7th grade to 12th grade. And then we even have young adults. So really at our church, anytime you come in, there's always something going on. But tonight we're focusing on the threes and four-year-olds. But everybody will agree that if once you're a rainbow, once you've been through the rainbow program, your heart is always here. And this is our chance as adults and older kids to enjoy the rainbow program. So without further ado, I'm gonna welcome Miss Cindy, our beloved rainbow teacher. She is missing her helpers and her kids, but she's doing a great job of bringing rainbows to you. Hi rainbows, hi parents, if you're there. I do not feel like I'm doing a great job. I would so like to be with my kids, having those rainbows in front of me, that actually inspires me. So I miss them, but I'm gonna try to, to do as well as I can without them there. Let's start out rainbows with our songs. This is part of what three and four year olds love is routine. So I have sung these songs for a very long time and the kids just, really enjoy doing the same ones over and over again. So let's do it. A rainbow, I'm a rainbow. I'm a promise of God's care. I like to share my happiness with my friends everywhere. Great job, rainbows. Now let's do our other rainbow song with our rainbow. Which way? Which way does it go? Purple up top or red up top? You are right. It's red on the top. And what the rainbows get to do when they're here is they all stand in a line. They all get to hold this. Everybody gets to put their hand on part of the rainbow and lift it up when we say the word high, high in the sky. So we will do this together. And rainbows, if you maybe... Maybe you've got a picture with a rainbow in it and you want to lift it up in the sky. So you could do it that way too. Whatever, whatever you want to do, but make sure you're singing. That's the important part. I want to, I want those voices singing really loud. Make if somebody's down in the basement of your house, sing loud enough that they can hear you down there. Okay, here we go. Only God can make a rainbow, a rainbow, a rainbow. Only God can make a rainbow so high in the sky. Red, orange, yellow, whoop, green, blue, and indigo too. Only God can make a rainbow like me and like you, 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 you. Great job, rainbows. And really, only God can make a rainbow. He's the only one that can make the rainbows that are in the sky. And he's the only one that could make you. You are special because God made you. And he made you to be different from everybody else. That's a really wonderful thing that God does for us. He makes us special and unique. So um, I'm not maybe really good at being in front of a camera, but I love rainbows. And that's part of how I'm unique. So let's go to our story. We're doing a story about Benjamin. And I am not going to go through the whole story from beginning to end again, because you can always look back at these past videos if you need to find out the beginning of the story. I'm just going to give you a real brief overview. So we have we have a boy. His name is Benjamin. His father was one of the shepherds that got to visit the manger where Jesus was born. And so Benjamin has been given the treasure box that his grandfather made 
And when grandfather was at Jesus' manger, he asked if he could have a little bit of the hay from Jesus' manger to remember the special night that the shepherds welcomed the newborn baby king, Jesus. And, and so he had that little bundle of hay and he puts it in a treasure box, a special treasure box that he had made. And each of the rainbows in our classroom have their very own treasure box. And we have been adding these treasures to their box so that they will remember all these special things about Jesus. So that first treasure ends up in the box. So we're gonna put the hay in the box. And now let's just do a real quick recap. So um, Benjamin goes on a special trip to Jerusalem because it's Passover. And when he gets there, Jesus is coming into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And people are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, praise, praise the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Jesus be our king. And so Benjamin grabs a palm branch and he puts that in his box to remember Jesus coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. And we are going to sing the song, just in case you thought we might not. Here we go. I'm gonna grab my palm branches and you grab yours. And remember, we learned a new verse last week and we'll sing that later on when, the, when we get to the sadder part of the story. So let's start, because here comes Jesus riding on a donkey. Here comes Jesus riding on a donkey. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. Wave your palm branches before him. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. And we're excited, so we're jumping up and down, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, shout Hosanna, Hosanna! Yay, Jesus, be our king! Well, Benjamin decided he was going to follow Jesus around Jerusalem and find out more about Jesus. And so at this point, after he meets Jesus on the um, donkey coming into Jerusalem. He ends up in the temple where Jesus gets rid of all the money changers, all the, the men who were selling and robbing things from the people, robbing them of the fair price of an animal. And maybe when they exchanged their money, not giving them as much money back as they should have gotten. And Jesus said, my house, God's house, is supposed to be a house of prayer and not a place where you make money and especially not a place where you steal money from my people. So when he turned over the, the tables of all these money changers and thieves, all the coins went flying in the air and Benjamin finds one on the temple floor after everybody had left and he puts that coin in his treasure box. And while he was doing that, he overheard a conversation of the people who worked in the temple. They are called the Pharisees. And these Pharisees hung out in the temple and they kind of thought they were better than all the rest of the people. And they didn't like Jesus at all. They never sang Hosanna or said, Jesus be our king. They wanted to get rid of Jesus. And so they, they were coming up with an idea of how to do that. And they said, we need to get one of Jesus' friends to betray him, to turn him over to us, to, to pretend like he's still Jesus' friend, but not really, because he's going to help us. And so they paid Judas 30 silver coins to help them get Jesus. And Judas was one of Jesus' friends. So that's also what that coin that he puts in the box reminds him of. And Benjamin thinks, I've got to tell Jesus. I've got to tell Jesus. I, I've got to let him know that that um, these men want to kill him. They, they, want to, they want to get him. They don't like him. But Benjamin had to serve a special meal at his aunt's home that night. And when he gets there and he's serving, helping serve this meal, it turns out 
that that is where Jesus is meeting with his disciples and having Passover. And then Jesus turns Passover into another special ceremony that we today call communion. And he holds up the cup with the wine in it made from grapes. And he says, this, this cup, this is the grape juice is like my blood. And whenever you drink the grape juice, I want you to remember that I am shedding my blood on the cross for you. And then he handed out the bread to them and said, and this bread should remind you of my body, which will be broken for you to forgive your sins. So Benjamin asked his aunt if he can keep one of the cups for his treasure box. And he puts that in his box. And then he doesn't get to talk to Jesus because before Benjamin can get back to the room, Jesus has left to go to the Mount of Olives. There was a special garden there with lots of olive trees. And Benjamin falls asleep while Jesus is praying in the garden, but he keeps an olive branch that he finds broken on the ground to remember Jesus praying in the garden and asking God, telling God that he's willing to do this. He's willing to go through all this suffering, all this hurt in order to save us from our sins. And so Benjamin puts that in his box. And the next time he sees Jesus, we have the picture of Jesus with that thorn crown on his head and he's bleeding from the thorns poking into his head. And he's got um, stripes on his body where the whip has broken his skin and caused him to bleed. And so Benjamin remembers that by putting one of the thorns that fell on the ground into his box and a piece of the whip. So those things are also in the box. And the next thing that Benjamin sees happen to Jesus is he's crucified on the cross. He's hanging on the cross. And when they come to take his body down, Benjamin picks up one of the stray nails that was on the ground and wants to put that in his box. And he also, gets one of the dice from where the soldiers were playing a game to see who could win Jesus' robe that they had put on him. And he puts that into his box. And when they wrap the body in a cloth after they take it down so that they can put Jesus' body in the tomb, Benjamin keeps a piece of the gauze that tears off the cloth and puts that into his box to remember that Jesus was wrapped in cloth and laid inside a tomb. Now we're at the part of the story that we haven't had yet. And Benjamin is at the tomb and he is so sad. He can't even see Jesus because the tomb is being guarded by Pilate's soldiers. They are told, to not let anybody come near it. And so Benjamin is just heartbroken and he goes home that night and he's so sad. Well, a couple of days later, Benjamin is still sad, but he runs in to one of the women that knew Jesus when he's at the marketplace. And she doesn't look sad. And she says, Benjamin, you don't need to be sad anymore. Let me tell you what happened. So she tells him the story. She says, Benjamin, we put him in the tomb. And then the tomb was sealed. And the next day, or days later, we were going there. And we thought, will the tomb, will we be able to get in? The stone might be still there. Maybe the soldiers are there. How will we get in to put this um, ointment on Jesus' body? They had brought special spices and perfumes to add to the wrapping of Jesus' body. And so Benjamin was like, well, well, what happened? What happened when you got there? And she said, 
it was amazing. When we got there, there was an angel sitting on top of the tombstone that was already rolled away. And the angel said, why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus isn't here. He's risen. He's not dead anymore. And so we ran and told his friends, the disciples, and they came and they looked in the tomb and all they could see was Jesus burial clothes that that gauze that they had wrapped him in was neatly folded laying in the tomb and so they didn't they thought we were just like crazy like we were seeing things but then they saw that Jesus wasn't there either and then Jesus he came and visited them and they saw him for real and they touched the nail prints in his hand and so we know Jesus is alive. He is not dead anymore. He has come back and he is now going to be able to take our sins away because he died on the cross and he rose again. And so we, we will die in this life, but our soul, our spirit inside us will go on living forever because we can be children of the king. We can be like Jesus and be in heaven with him someday when we die. And so Benjamin was so excited that he took his treasure box and he started telling everybody, all of his friends, all about Jesus and all about the things in his treasure box that he had seen. And that night... When Benjamin went to sleep, he looked up to heaven and he thanked Jesus for dying on the cross for his sins. And he said, Jesus, I can't wait till I get to see you someday up in heaven. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for all the things you went through that I can remember because of the treasures in my box and so that ends the story of benjamin's box but rainbows there's one more treasure that you're going to get to put in your box it's an egg and and what we usually do in the classroom is we take this little egg and we hide it inside a bigger plastic egg and you guys get to search for them and find your own egg. And then when you open that bigger egg, this is what's inside it. It's your last treasure. And the reason this is your last treasure is because it is a really good reminder of the empty tomb. Because when you open it, there's nothing inside. It's empty. So Jesus was put in a tomb and then the stone was rolled away because Jesus wanted to, us to see that he was no longer there. The tomb is empty because Jesus is risen. So an empty egg can remind us that the stone was rolled away to show us that Jesus is alive. He's not dead and buried in a tomb. And that's the last treasure that gets to go into your Benjamin's box. And all those treasures are in your boxes. So when we get to come back to church, we're going to make sure you get your box. Because remember, you put your name on the bottom. So we know which one was yours. And I just want to say, here's, here's our little friend, Turdy, again. And Turdy says... Wow, that's a cool story about Jesus. Did he make me too? And rainbows, we know. We know that Jesus made all living creatures. So yes, Turdy, Jesus did make you. And he made you special. And you are a great reminder that sometimes we have to stay inside longer than we like. But we're going to make it. And we're going to be back together again soon. Thanks. 
I love you, rainbows. I'm going to let Pastor Rebecca close our time together. Well, that was pretty wonderful. Don't you agree? I love that that little turdy is teaching us that it, we have to be content. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that is often about being content, being patient. So be patient. Well, you'll be back with us real soon and we'll get to give you a hug. Oh, can everybody do that right now? Everybody just take your arms and enjoy that. Oh, hug really tight because I want to hug you. And you know what I like to do, right? High five. So give me a high five. High five. There you go. One more. Awesome. Oh, a little harder. Awesome. Hey. Parents, kids, you're doing a good job. And if, if you're watching this and you have no idea what the COVID is, praise God. So let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for the rainbows. We thank you that they are helpers, that they can help their parents while they're at home. And we thank you so much that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. You're going to help us. It's you inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I will see you next week. Yay. Hey, this is um, part two of a rainbows class. We forgot to do a couple things. One is we forgot to show you the craft. I'm going to attach the craft um, to the attachment so you can download them. And you can cut this out and make a little tomb. And then you can literally have, you know, Jesus isn't there and the angel can be on top. Whoops, there we go. The angel can be on top saying, He's not here. Why do you seek the living among the dead? And then the other thing that's probably worth the price of admission is um, you can get a donut, cut it in half, and a little cookie. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? And then roll away the stone. And there's, look, there's there's nobody in here because Jesus is alive. Woo well, we just thought you'd want to know this because this is one of the best parts of rainbows. And uh, as we get older, Things have to be pieced together, as you know. Hey, thanks again. Bye-bye.